It's midnight on Friday at a bustling bar in the college town of Charlotte, North Carolina. A couple of hours later, after last call, 26-year-old Katie Jones and her friends leave the bar. What kind of a person was she? Her just energy and her charisma. She, she just, it was disarming and overwhelming and very spontaneous and spunky. So when her friends offer this free spirit a ride home. She said, no. She's like, are you crazy? This is one of the last warm nights of the year. I'm not missing this. I mean, she loved to walk. Did Katie walk home alone at night frequently? Yeah, like every night. But Katie's mother says there was no reason for her daughter to feel worried about walking home. After all, it was a busy weekend night in this very safe college town. There were plenty of lights, plenty of people around. It wasn't something that she would have had any reason to fear. She'd been doing it for five years. How far is the walk? About a mile. And during her walk home, Katie is posting nonstop photos to friends. She was communicating with her friends um, on her walk home, taking photos of landmarks along her walk on Central Avenue and sending them out on a um, Facebook chat that had a group of people from work in it. Her text messages seemed very normal, um, no concern or distress. And according to her friends on the chat, Katie appears to be dancing and singing. She was dancing all the way. She appeared to be happy and jovial and was skipping along, is that right? Yes. Dancing and skipping towards her death as soon as she turns the corner. She was shot. Where was she struck? She was struck through the side. It actually punctured her heart and her lung through the side. A resident walking his dog believes someone is setting off fireworks in the parking lot of a nearby business. So he walked down there to see what was going on and then he saw her laying there. And even though the Good Samaritan neighbor found her within minutes of the shooting and called 911, it was still too late. She was already gone. She was already gone. Katie's mother had just spoken to her daughter three days before the fatal shooting. They had made plans to see each other in two weeks. It's just devastating. When you can't keep them safe, there's nothing you can do. It's done. Your chance to keep them protected and loved and safe is over. You failed. Right away, cops canvass the area and interview neighbors and friends of the beloved 26-year-old. Were you able to uncover anyone who had any issues with Katie? No. Everyone loved Katie. Investigators appear to hit a dead end. Then they discover surveillance video from a building directly across from where the shooting occurred. Could there be evidence on the video that could point them to Katie's killer? Coming up. Katie's death has been described as the perfect crime. No witnesses, no suspects. There are no witnesses who have come forward. That doesn't mean that there are no witnesses. Police get a big break in the case they are sharing only with us. You have some video of Katie prior to the shooting. Yes. But the surveillance video doesn't just capture Katie, it also reveals something else. That car was the car that had her killer in it. 26-year-old Katie Jones has been shot to death just a couple streets away from her Charlotte, North Carolina home. I still can't imagine what I'm going through. And I keep looking for something that I'm missing and I can't find it. She was a big presence. A presence now gone, leaving so many unanswered questions. Who do you think could have done this to her? I think like realistically, it could have literally been anyone. Following the shooting, police conduct dozens of interviews. We have interviewed pretty much anybody who was close to Katie, either at that point in time or leading up to that point in time. But unfortunately, it hasn't given us any actionable leads at this point. It hasn't materialized into anything yet. Correct. The investigation appears to stall. Then cops catch a break, kicking the case back into high gear with the discovery of surveillance video. The explosive video evidence shows Katie walking home, following drinks with some restaurant co-workers on the night she was gunned down. That camera 
got her walking down this sidewalk. Correct. Now, Charlotte police are asking for the public's help by releasing the footage for the very first time to Crime Watch Daily. Surveillance cameras or cameras in the area. There was one. Correct. Any more than one or just the one shot? There are cameras all around here, but the only one that caught anything that relevant it? to this case is going to be the one across the street there. Frame by frame, the video documents Katie's final moments in the early morning hours of October 15th, 2016. It's 2.40 a.m. when Katie first comes into view of the camera's lens. She's captured walking down Central Avenue in an area in Charlotte known as Plaza Midwood. She comes from there. She walks down. She makes a left. A left onto the plaza headed towards Hammerton Place. Little does Katie know, she's got less than a minute to live. On the video, she disappears into the shadows of the trees in the house right there. And while at this point on the video, Katie is out of sight, at the same time, something else comes into focus. You can see headlights from a vehicle appear in the screen for a very, very brief moment. That's right. A mystery car appears to pull right next to the parking lot driveway where Katie's body is later discovered. Is it to the driveway entrance? Yes. Where this happens? Yes. And what you know is that there's definitely a vehicle that comes down this street, right? Correct. It approaches from this direction. From this direction? Yes. So the vehicle's coming from this direction and then out? Yes. And then where was she shot in this area? Uh, so she was located um, right around this area. Do you believe the gunman was in that vehicle? I think so, yes. But Detective Eisenhower doesn't believe it's a drive-by shooting. Personally, I think somebody got out of the car okay. um, and approached her for her to be this far over from the sidewalk where from the she sidewalk. originally was. And there's something else. I think it was a complete surprise to her. Based on that video, it doesn't really appear that she would have had time to defend herself. And if she had the chance to defend herself, her friends say she would have done just that. She clearly knew what she was doing. She had pink pepper spray with her at all times. And she had her phone. Yeah. And she would yell if she had the opportunity to. Definitely. So if not a drive-by, could Katie's shooting be the result of a robbery gone bad? In recent years, Charlotte's robbery unit has seen a spike in targeting late-night restaurants and their employees. And on the night Katie was killed, she was on her way home from an after-work hangout with some fellow restaurant co-workers. Was there anything taken from her? Not that we could tell. In fact, Katie's phone was found in her back pocket, her purse with money still inside it, lying next to her. It didn't make sense. Nothing was missing on her body. Like, it really looked like someone shot her and left. But police believe it still could have been an attempted robbery, and they have a theory as to why nothing was taken. Take another look at the surveillance video. At 2.41 a.m., the headlights of the suspected shooter's car appear right next to where Kitty would have been walking. Then, just 21 seconds later, the driver appears to slam the car in reverse and abruptly backs up. But why? So the shot or the shots that were fired were so loud that this alarm sounded. Yes. That's right. The gunfire sets off the nearby business's alarm system. Could it be the shooter got spooked and didn't have enough time to rob Katie? So this alarm sounding, there's gunfire erupting, and she's basically right here on the ground. Correct. Then, seconds after backing up, what appears to be the same car comes back into view and races from the scene, then out of camera range. Cops haven't been able to confirm if it's the killer's car. We've slowed down and blown up the video. Look right here. You can actually see the light-colored sedan just before it drives out of frame. In real time, the suspect's car races by in a flash. The murder went down in about 30 seconds, but police believe the cold-blooded killing was so attention-grabbing that someone had to have seen or heard something that terrible night. It doesn't mean that there is no one out there who has information to provide. It's just a lot of times people with that information are reluctant to come and share it with the police. 
So we need someone with direct information or even indirect information at this point to come and talk to us and provide us with that path that we need to go down. And according to the video, there were plenty of potential eyewitnesses. Around 2.41 a.m. when the mystery car pulls up and police believe Katie was gunned down, five cars drive by. And if you look closely, there's one car, a red midsize sedan, that appears to drive right by the killer's car when the shooting was actually taking place. Detective Eisenhower says they were unable to identify the make or model of that red car and have yet to speak with the person behind the wheel or any passengers who may have been inside. And get this, during the next five minutes from the time Katie is shot to when the first responders arrive, 17 more cars drive by the crime scene. That's a total of 22 cars and 22 chances that someone saw something. There has been many, many hours, weeks, months of time and effort that's been put into working this case, following up on information that has come in, um, either by phone or email. Just, there's been a lot of time put into this case. And this is not considered cold. No. This is an open case, an open investigation. Yes, ma'am. So if you were in the area of the plaza in Central Avenue during the early morning hours of October 15th, 2016, police want to hear from you. What would you tell that person who maybe hasn't had the courage or the strength to call you? I would ask them, what if it was their family? What if it was their sister, their mom, their girlfriend walking home in the middle of the night? They would want someone to come forward to share that information. I want the answers. I want justice for her. She doesn't deserve to go into death not being known what happened. Her story is not finished. It needs to be finished. But until Katie's friends and family get answers about her death, they are determined to focus on her life by creating a scholarship of the arts in her name at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Students in the area that wanted to pursue theater or singing or art or any of the things that Katie was, was passionate about, ultimately there is now an endowed scholarship that will live on in perpetuity, that will be awarded every year. Katie will not only live on in all of you, but now in strangers. Absolutely, yeah. It is a beautiful silver lining. Someone must know who pulled the trigger that night, and it's time for you to come forward. Anyone with information is asked to call the Charlotte Crime Stoppers at 1704-334-1600. There's a reward of up to $5,000 in the case.